Hello, and welcome to What's My Tagline. I'm your host, Carol Flagg. Thanks for listening today. On this show, we put the microphone in front of industry experts to discuss their roles, insights, and ideas on marketing, PR, branding, messaging, social media, and other related topics. You can learn more about the show on its program page on healthcarenowradio.com. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Carol Flagg and connect with me on LinkedIn. On this episode, I talk with Jody Amendola, the CEO and founder of Amendola Communications. In a year where many PR and marketing firms worked hard to hold the course for their current clients reeling from the COVID-19 pandemic, Jody's company grew, taking bold steps to expand outside the agency's health IT-centric client list. She also lost her mom to COVID late last year and shares that experience, echoing the thought that losing a loved one to COVID is more than a statistic. Well, Jody, welcome back to what's my tagline. It's been a it's been a couple of years, but I am looking forward to talking with you as my first guest of the new year 2021. Oh wow! Didn't know I was your first guest. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 certainly been an interesting year, which we're going to talk about. But uh, it's been a while since we chatted, so I will refresh your memory that uh, my first question from all my guests is: if you had to describe yourself as a tagline, what would it be? Yes. So because of what we're talking about today, my tagline is PR is personal. And let me explain that. Um, The most impactful PR you can deliver is personal. Um, When you, I've, I've told clients for years that when you can tell stories that resonate and an appeal on emotional level, then we can get you into the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, the outlets that every single client and prospect in my 30-year career has wanted to be in. Um, and with this year being one of the most challenging years any of us has faced both emotionally, financially, physically, um, and it was a very difficult year for me, as you know, Carol, um, PR really is personal. And I I want to thank you for allowing me to use my voice to get the word out on how I lost my mom to undiagnosed COVID, despite my pleas to her facility, her caregivers, the nurses, the doctor, even the private caregiver that I hired. My voice was not heard. Um, It was not loud enough. So um, my mom's COVID diagnosis came a half hour after her death. Wow. Yeah. It, 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 and I, I, I do know your story. Um, and I think it's, it's it, it, touched by COVID, I think is, is, is too light of a thing to say, you know, you're, you're, you've been greatly impacted by, by, by COVID and the spread of COVID. And it's interesting that, you know, you and I, uh, because we're in this business and, and, you know, we're in health IT and we sort of, I think both sort of marked our start of the COVID experience with the cancellation of HIMSS last year, which is we're coming up to, to almost a full year of that, you know, it was the middle, middle of March, 2020. And you're right. Everybody, you know, companies, PR firms, agencies, us as media overnight, everybody had to, had to, had to pivot and uh, pivot in a lot of different ways. And I'd, I'd actually like to start Start with that because, um, you know, it, 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 as much as COVID has impacted you so much personally, which we'll, 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 we'll get back to that, you, you, 2020, you had an incredibly successful year. So I'd like to, I think, start on that conversation. You know, it was, you know, hymns got canceled. It was immediately, you know, apparent to everybody in the industry that um, certainly by April or May, that sort of any resumption of normal business was not in anybody's near future. Um, so, so as the as the CEO of Amendola, you know, what did you think back then, and and where did you go? Where where did you take the company? Yeah, so I certainly did not think that J.P. Morgan would be the last time that I would be on a commercial airplane in oh, twenty twenty right. January. Yeah, <laughs> right. Or, or attending um, a major healthcare event and meeting clients and prospects and, and socializing. Um, I had actually bought three new suits for him and <laughs> we had all of our hotel, hotel rooms booked yeah. and <clears throat> we had tons of interviews lined up and we were excited and, and ready to go. 
Um, and at that point, you know, it was just the, the very, very beginning of the pandemic. Um, and like I told you earlier, kind of this, this disease that had hit um, New York, New Jersey area really, really bad. But here in Arizona, we didn't, we didn't really know from it. And um, in terms of business, wow, I've seen everything in 2020 that I could ever imagine um, and really had to pivot our business model, um, be flexible, um, began taking on small projects that I previously avoided. I had always really focused on long-term engagements and annual contracts. Um, I had to pause contracts, uh, rewrote others, um, allowed clients to swap out their um, set deliverables for uh, for a variety of reasons, but for any clients who are facing their own challenges within the pandemic. Um, we had to make difficult personnel decisions, but it also took advantage of a great opportunity to hire a lot of good talent that previously would be unavailable. Mm. Um, we were able to expand our footprint in life sciences and medical devices. Um, we, Carol, were already leveraging Zoom and a remote workforce. So while we do have our corporate headquarters in Arizona, we have less than 10 people in our corporate office. Um, the bulk of our people, because I learned many, many years ago, you hire where the talent is. Um, so... You know, I'm pleased to say, yes, we, because of, um, I'm, I'm thankful that we're in healthcare and healthcare IT and life sciences. I personally have friends who are in other industries who lost their businesses, lost their houses. Um, so I always am very fortunate and grateful that we work in healthcare where um, people will always get sick and we will always need uh, technology to run efficient systems. Um, but it certainly was a year that I would never want to repeat. Yeah. Um, I've never worked harder in my life, nor has uh, my clients. But uh, coming out the other end, we were able to um, give raises, give bonuses. Um, and we started 2021 off with uh, three new retainer clients who were participating in RFPs. We have just lots of momentum. Um, and in part, it's it's because we have a lot of repeat clients who've come back, a lot of clients who um, continue with us signing year over year. Um, but it was, it was tough. It was a very hard news cycle. Um, there were many reporters that were furloughed and we couldn't get through to them. So we had to come up with creative ways to make our clients' COVID stories rise above the noise. Right? How could they stand out? And again, it's all about creative storytelling um, and building great relationships with the media um, to make sure that um, we got inked. And we did. I mean, we had more coverage this year, I think, than ever, and certainly more in the consumer business press. So it was beyond um, just healthcare, healthcare IT, and the other trade media. But we also pivoted with. Um, Things like video interviews and podcasts. I mean, we had one outlet where we secured over two dozen interviews. Um, you know, they just went with all of our clients. So, so that was great. Um, but we also guided our clients through new messaging, um, expanded integrated marketing communications programs, um, helped them through losing things like going to events such as HIMSS with focusing on virtual conferences and webinars um, to take place of those in-person events. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. so, it's so interesting, you know, because a lot of companies and, and, and we saw this just, you know, on, you know, Roberta and I saw this on our side, you know, it's, it's, it, it was such an evolving story, the, the whole COVID story was, was evolving and changing, you know, it seemed, you know, you're right. Like we're sitting in Arizona and, and, you know, we're, we weren't dealing with it in, in the, the, like at, at the level that we are today, unfortunately leading, leading the country and possibly the world and in infection rates, but it, it would have been easy and not easy, but it would have been 
and certainly a lot of companies chose to do this, you know, to, to sort of say, okay, we will get out of this. Let's just hunker down for a year or not, you know, whatever that time it was, a, you know, the, the timeline kept expanding. Let's hunker down for three months, let's hunker down for six months, let's hunker down for a year, you know, let's, you know, just keep the lights on and, you know, work with our clients the best we can. And let's, we'll get through this and we'll rebound on the other side. But, but what you did was say, mm, you know, we, we need to tighten our belts here, but let's, I mean, explore new, like new parts of healthcare, like you said, life sciences and, 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 and medical devices, and let's explore different avenues for getting our clients' stories out there, which of course takes resources and effort to, to do that anyway, to begin with. So, you know, it's, you tightened your belt, you, you got scrappy and you expanded your, your reach at the same time. We did. We did. We were, you know, like I said, very lucky. Um, the last time I was out on your um, interview by you, my tagline was the connector because I know a lot of people in healthcare and healthcare IT. I've been in this business for over 30 years. And so, you know, that was our philosophy, right? To leverage our connections with the media, with the analysts, with prospects, with clients to um, expand current programs and make them bigger, make them fully integrated. I think our clients definitely rely on us as an extension of their team, a valued partner. They know that we weren't going to stick to the letter of the contract. Um, and, and we have a provider, a very large provider group in New York City, and there was no way that they were going to focus on giving us an interview <laughs> For yeah. their thought leader, yeah. yeah, when their doctor could be saving patient lives, right? Yeah. Yeah. So instead, you know, hey, can we write an email blast or, um, you know, whatever, whatever was needed that they threw at us, whether it was administrative or PR related, we did it um, because that's what a good partner does, right? Right. It's it's the ups and downs, and so I don't know, you know, ne- I've never been one to be complacent with the status quo. And so you want to take the, the positive and the negative opportunities and, and look forward and see how you can um, make lemonade out of lemons, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So, well, but you, you made this point, and it's really true, um, that, you, you know, media, media was, not just obviously in our industry, media across the board, was, especially in the, you know, the, the B2B side, which, which we're in, you know, cut across the board, every st- every news cycle story out there was COVID related, right? And there was this, you know, this, this avalanche of, you know, coverage related to COVID as there, as there should be a global, global pandemic. Right. Um, And yet you also found a way, you know, to bring and shed light on the stories of your clients to get them that virtual ink in those interviews and, and, and whatnot. So I, you know, this unique talent to, um, you know, make lemonade out of lemons, but, but, but also, mm-hmm. you know, really find, um, find those personal stories and those touch points that, uh, you know, resonated with, resonated with the audience you were, you were looking to get your client in front of. Yeah, it was not always easy. I mean, there were days where my team was pulling their hair out. Um, yeah. And there were days where we were very successful. And, then, you know, you have to celebrate those milestones and successes and um, boost each other's confidence to, to keep it going. And that's what teamwork is all about. Um, so it's, it's not always easy, but um, we... Or like I said, we're, we're lucky. I mean, telehealth took off, right? We right, have multiple right. clients that um, even if they didn't have a telehealth solution, all of a sudden <laughs> started right. touting their telehealth, right? Um, they had they had, had one a, now. <laughs> they had one now, exactly. So it's um, overnight things just became very different. I had one client who their business model was in-home personal assessments. Oh, and obviously wow. you could not go in the home. They had um, another product that took, you know, it, it was not even in their, their daily <laughs> um, workflow, but that product then became front and center. 
and their in-home personal assessments, you know, obviously were done differently. Um, right, right. So it, it, it's just about helping clients uh, message their, their new solutions in a COVID world. Right. So, you know, you're, you're managing you and your team through an incredibly difficult year. You're, you're finding new business and other, other previously on for you anywhere, not, you know, not areas that you, you typically focused in because of, you know, this health IT wealth of experience that you and your team bring to the table. So you're finding new business avenues. You're, you're, you're getting these stories out. You're working with your clients to say, you, maybe this is not the product you should be talking about right now. Let's, let's switch gears. And, and then we, we, we come into the fall, um, which is, you know, we got, we got through the summer here in Arizona and I, I'm in Arizona, as you know, we're, 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 we're Arizonans together here. You know, we had a, yep. kind of, we, had, we had a bad bout of it in, in June and July kind of, kind of came out of it in September and then, and then the holidays start approaching and, um, and you're ticking along with your team and whatnot, being careful, doing everything you can do, um, a, not to get COVID, not to, in, certainly not to expose, expose yourself and your mother um, is in a, uh, a, a, a nursing facility. And so, you know, COVID. And it's just a living co- facility. It's just, yeah. it's just a living, right. Co- so co- COVID now touches you very personally. And I, 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 I and I love to love for you to share your story as a caregiver, right. As the person mm-hmm. responsible. For yeah. I was the one right. managing and coordinating her care. As my mom always called me her lifeline. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was a conversation that went by where she didn't say, you know, thank you, darling. You're my lifeline. I don't know what I would do without you. Um, my mom was 96. So she, she was older, but she had her, um, faculties. Um, she was bright. She was sharp. She was funny. She always made everybody laugh. Um, and she always told us, all of us, after each conversation, be very careful. This virus is very dangerous. And I don't think she ever in a million years thought that she was susceptible because they didn't let anybody in and out. Right. It was, you know, um, we, we were on lockdown, um, which was really hard on my mom, um, as most seniors, um, from I think March to August or something like that. Yeah. It was many, many months of, um, that social isolation that at the time I remember thinking to myself, I don't know what's worse, the social isolation or if, you know, they were to get COVID because it was just, horrible seeing my mom in her room 24 7 meals were delivered there they yeah. stopped um all the activities you know i mean there was yeah, bingo on the phone but it that's it was it was terrible to be honest with you and my mom was actually kind of at death's door um in july i was away and i got a phone call um uh, she was actually, it was 24 hours went by and nobody had heard from her. And I was like, oh my gosh, something is not right. And that's when I got special permission to come in. And when I saw her, I couldn't believe her decline. And again, oh, it was because God. of this social isolation. My mom was a very social person. She had a lot of spunk and liked to talk and tell her stories and, and play cards and bingo. And all that was taken away. Um but after a couple days of me being with her, I was able to get her appetite back. And, um, you know, she just needed, she just needed that human contact. Um, even if I was in PPE gear, it was just it was still, it was being able to see me, touch me um, and communicate. And so at that point I hired a private caregiver so that she would never be alone. So she started with four hours a day and then quickly went up to 12 hours a day. So, um, and then when things opened up in Arizona, life was great. Um, she reengaged with all of her friends and enjoyed meals in the dining room, and um, everything was wonderful until uh, November, when there was, I guess, a couple cases of COVID that came to the fore, and they went on lockdown again. I was um, in California at that time. And, you know, when I left, my mom was great and I felt really good in leaving her. Um, again, I had full, full-time full caregivers in the, the facility with her. Um, and 
they tested everybody as soon as they found out. And my mom tested negative. Um, later that week, I learned that a gentleman that my mom had breakfast with on the Sunday, the day before my mom was testing, um, got COVID. What I now know was that there's, you know, it wasn't a long enough incubation period. It wasn't even 24 hours, basically, that she was exposed to the person who had COVID. Um, but I did immediately... Um, send an email to the executive director and say, you know, after about a week or so when I started to get concerned, um, how long is the incubation period and does my mom need to be retested? And he responded to my email and said, let me, let me ask my infection control expert. I'll get back to you. Um, and then didn't get back to me. And then by the following week, my mom just she didn't show the normal symptoms that a lot of people associate with COVID. Um, and so nobody detected it, I guess. But what I've come to find out is that in the elderly, people are, they're very, 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 very tired. That's really the, the primary symptom. Um, of course, you know, there is no one size fits all with COVID at any age. Right, right. Um, he, she did have uh, a little bit of a wet cough but usually they say it's the dry cough. So when I heard, oh, a little wet cough, oh, I felt good. Like, oh, well, then my mom doesn't have COVID, right? She didn't have a temperature. Her vitals were good. Um, you know, I've, I've come to learn again, that means nothing. Um, so um, I immediately came back from California. I visited her outside her patio, even though I was allowed in. I didn't want to be exposed to COVID and I didn't know if she had it or not. I didn't know um, if I was, you know, an asymptomatic carrier or anything. So I tried to play it safe, um, but my mom wasn't able to really enjoy my visits and that wasn't my mom. So I knew something was wrong. Um, she would just look at me and say, oh, I'm so tired, darling. Can I, can I, do you mind if I take a nap? And I'd say, like, now, mom, or when I leave? And, oh, now would be good. And I was yeah. like, wow, that, that was frightening to me. So that's when I started, you know, texting her, her hospice nurse, her doctor, the facility, her caregivers. And um, every day I went back and it was the same thing. She just really couldn't keep her head up. Um, and no matter how many doctors or nurses or caregivers looked at her, um, they just kept telling me that she was fine, and I, I persisted and asked for a COVID test. I said, they were telling me that she was declining because she was old, and I said, no, I know it's not that. I know, I know my mom. I know, I'm pretty sure she has COVID. Um, and uh, the night before she ended up dying, I did go in in full PPE gear with my husband, and um, she couldn't breathe. Um, they wanted to take her to the hospital at that point. And I said, at that point, what is the point? I mean, she was so far gone um, that they, they ordered oxygen, which took an hour and a half to get there. The meds took over two hours to get there. It's, you know, again, the lessons I learned is that you should always have a nurse on, on staff 24-7. Uh, you should always have oxygen. Um, they, you know, a week before when her oxygen level was, very low. They said my mom seemed fine and she didn't complain of trouble breathing. And so they don't go by what the technology says. They go by the person. Well, that was incorrect. But I didn't, again, I didn't know all this at the time. Right. Right. It wasn't until a couple of days later um, that I tested positive for COVID. Um, that then I talked to the Mayo nurse and found out all the things to look for. Like if your oxygen level is below 95, go to the ER. Nobody has right. you know, mentioned that before. My mom, my mom was under 85. So, I mean, and that was, you know, several days before she passed. So right. nobody, nobody helped her then. She should have been on oxygen then. Um, but Carol, even since then, I've learned even more because my mother-in-law, um, got COVID uh, about six weeks after my mother. 
and it, it and died very quickly and so did many other people in her facility so i think it's really hard you know, when when an elderly person gets it in a facility um to to have a positive outcome right, right. Sure it, it does happen but i am i am forever grateful that i was able to to be with my mom when she passed my husband and i um sang you are my sunshine to her. Oh, she, oh, oh, yeah. She was able to hum it with us. This was the, the night before she passed, um, even though when she couldn't breathe. Right, right. So, um, so and, well, we have that. And you were in, um, you were in full PPE gear along with your husband, and and discovered yes. after your mom passed away that you you were exposed somewhere along the lines, right? Um, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's hard to say. I mean, the, the, night bef- the night before she passed, I was in full PPE gear with a double mask on, but I was crying, taking yeah, my mask yeah. up and down. However, I was continually washing my hands and using, um, so I, I don't know. The following morning when I was there, when she, I was only there a half hour before she passed away in the morning, um, I was wearing an N95 mask and yeah. in full PPE gear. My husband was in full PPE gear. He didn't get it. So again, like I said, this COVID's just one of those strange things. There, are, there. Are, you don't always yeah. follow the same path. Yeah, symptoms are different. Um, obviously, you know, and then you you lost your mother in law to COVID as well, very very fast. Um, also, she was also 96, I think. Your mother-in-law? She was. Yeah, yeah. She was, yeah. And then one of the other concerns, I think, in the elderly is dehydration because yeah. I wasn't able to be in the room with my mom. My mom never really drank very much, as most seniors, you know, a lot of seniors don't. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that there wasn't enough fluids going into her. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, we'll never know now, but... Um, yeah, I think another thing that really horrified me was that neither one of the facilities had a rapid COVID test. Uh, we had to wait three days for the results. And that's oh, wow. pretty crazy. And yes. then after, after this incident with my mom, then they started testing every week. But as soon as they had a COVID case, I don't understand why they wouldn't have tested every single week. They were right, doing it, right. you know, once in a while. So um, that's, you know, super, super important. Yeah. and there, But now yeah, we live in a different world. We have vaccines on the market. We um, do. It, but, it, but it just, but like a different world, but just so, f- I mean, just apparently it feels like, it does feel to me like overnight a different world, right? In the sense of, you know, mm-hmm. um, because, you, you know, you lost your mom in November and then your, your mother-in-law really just a, a few weeks ago, correct? Like a month ago. Yeah. 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 January 11th, January 11th. Right. It's, and, you know, and, and, and it's, it's sad, you know, the, the, it, you know, these, these stories about, you know, the, el- you know, the elderly and people who are in long-term care or memory care or nursing, skilled nursing facilities, hospice, um, all of that, you know, they are, you know, to say that they're at risk obviously is, is, you know, you know, it's just doesn't just really just justly describe the the risk that they the peril that they're actually in, basically, right? Um, you right. know, from from this, and you know, the symptoms are different. You know, they do differ, and um, and you know, the the obviously, you know, different states, different areas. You know, even as a nation, we've we've you know how we've responded to, to this pandemic and COVID, like when we look back a year from now, um, you know, what those, what those lessons have been, because at some point we, we will knock on, I mean, hopefully knock on wood, not nine t- time soon, but we'll, someday there'll be another pandemic. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, you know, as, as, as patients, as caregivers, as people we're in healthcare, um, people in our community, you know, we want to keep it, we want to keep ourselves safe. I, I've been thinking a lot this this past year. You know, we 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 come into twenty twenty one, new year, new administration. You know, you know, January always seems like you know this time for renewal. Anyway, right? As we look back and right. the previous year, 
and where we want to perhaps, you know, do differently or change or improve going into 2021. And I, I keep thinking about this, the past year and I, I did not lose it. I had family members who got COVID and I've got friends and I've got friends who lost like you who, who lost people to COVID, but I, I wasn't as personally touched as, as you were. Um, and, but I, I still think about this fact that, uh, as, as, you know, people that I love, friends, family, community, that, you know, hopefully one of the things learned on the other side of this is that we all have to care about each other, right? And keep each other safe and be, and be, you know, kind and, and be kind and be gentle and be understanding um, I think more, more understanding about what's going on around us, perhaps. Absolutely. The one thing I didn't mention in terms of um, my staff is that we have many people who are home working, right? And then their spouses are also home working. And now they had kids at home um, that didn't have daycare. Some yes. of them, you know, very young. Yeah. So that was a distraction. And so, you know, that meant that my employee probably couldn't work a full day um, or maybe only, you know, could, couldn't give 100% all of the time. And so it was, it's kind of an investment in humanity where if they're good people and yeah. have been loyal, you make other arrangements. And so I was able to, to do that um, in one instance where a full-time employee went to, to part-time um, because of his family situation. Um, but yeah, in terms of, you know, being kind and good to each other, we could all wear a mask. Um, yes. yes, it's uncomfortable yeah. and yes, it's annoying, but it could help save a life, right? Multiple right. lives, right? right. Um, we can keep our social distance and certainly wash our hands. So these aren't really big things um, in the scheme of things, right? They're, they're just uncomfortable. And us as Americans are used to just doing what we want to do. And um, right. You know, nobody wants, nobody wants to lose their, their family member. So, um, no, no. And I'm, yeah, at home. nobody wants to lose a family member. Nobody wants to lose a friend, but nobody should want to lose a stranger either. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, right. you know, right. that, <laughs> I think, yeah. I think that's part of it too, you know, that, uh, collectively, you know, sure. that we, you know, as you know, it, 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 you hear this term a lot, you know, appeal to your, you know, appeal to our better angels. You know, I, it's, it, sometimes it sounds a little, you know, maybe a little trite, but it's really true, right? That we should, we should, we should personally, I think, you know, live by that and want to make sure everybody's safe, right? No matter, no matter who they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So 2021, we're, you know, again, January always feels like a, a time for renewal and certainly coming out of, I mean, which I think everybody could definitely tell, you know, be, would agree is probably one of the worst years ever, right? Um, <laughs> I, but 2021 is here. Um, and, you know, while there may or may not be in-person conferences in our, our, our future, we, like, as you said, we, <laughs> you know, we have a vaccine now, things are rolling out. Um, I feel more optimistic about 2021, and I think I do you, too. Yeah, you do too. I yeah. do too. Yeah. No, it's definitely started out right. Um, I'm uh, again not a day goes by that I don't have some type of inbound referral lead or some former client I've worked with at multiple other companies coming back. So that's what keeps me going, Carol. Um, it's just so nice to have those relationships. Yeah. And um, and be excited for for what's to come. So. Um, just on Friday, I got a phone call from a company that can help with the process of the clinical of the um, vaccine rollout, because as we know, um, th- th- it's just not being done fast enough. Right. And there, right. there have been some inherent issues. Um, so there are lots of companies now <laughs> that are uh, having solutions to help with that. And so it um, looks like starting tomorrow, we'll be working with with one of those. So oh, wow. there's always yeah. something new and exciting to look forward to. Um, one of the things I also didn't 
mentioned before that we're doing more work with clients who have a presence in the U.S., but also some national work in Asia, Australia, and the Middle East. Oh, um, you've gone so international. Really fun and exciting. Yeah. Yeah, wow. we, that, that is exciting. We can't, we can't travel there. I'm looking forward to that. Maybe <laughs> no. that's 2022. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's expansions with more uh, interesting programs that are encompassing digital marketing, social media, um, PR, advertise, you know, everything together integrated um, to right. make more of an impact. Right. I appreciate you sharing sharing you know your story and and your your, your journey this, you know, through 2020. And I know 2021 um, is going to, it will at least be much better than 2020. If you're interested in learning more about Jody Amendola and Amendola Communications, visit them online at acmarketingpr.com. Be sure to connect with Jody and the company on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Have a topic or idea for the show? Reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter or shoot me an email at carol at hightechanswers.com. Until next time, I'm Carol Flagg, and I want to know what's your tagline.